Welcome to Barn Time, everybody. Today we're joined with a really special guest, Clinton Ross Davis. Really excited about it. This guy puts the barn in Barn Time. So, um, Zach uh, is by my side one? here. And my name's Kyer, and thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, you know, it's um, definitely been needing some space to get away. Got to go to Big Bear this weekend. It was really nice, and getting up into the mountains. And you know, you went there like a couple weeks ago, right? I love it up there. Like right when you hit the mountainside, you just feel you feel more relaxed, you know, and you can just you get that inspiration. You know? Totally, totally. Um, I'd say Clinton's music makes me feel like I'm up in the mountains. Totally. So, you want to start us off with a couple tunes? Sure thing. Sweet. Thanks again for being here, man. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll kick things off with a uh, old New Orleans uh, piece from a guy named Jelly Roll Morton. This one's called the Original Jelly Roll Blues. <laughs> Jelly yeah. roll. Yeah. Hey. It's the classics right there. All right. Switch over and kind of just play two tunes here that I think kind of represent the range of what I do from New Orleans to, uh, you know, real mountain stuff. <laughs> so, this is a really beautiful old uh, murder ballad uh, called Poor Ellen Smith. Lying cold on the ground, lying cold on the ground, 
lying cold on the ground. Shot through the heart, lying cold on the ground. While drinking and gambling and rambling around, a bullet from my pistol knocked poor Ellen down. Knocked poor Ellen down. Knocked poor Ellen down. A bullet from my pistol knocked poor Ellen down. So beautiful how diverse such nice music clinton you. you uh you have a true genuine play playing uh just uh it sounds so nice thank you very um, much yeah. so you're a fifth generation kentuckian right as far as i know yeah <laughs> yeah is that where the uh kind of the origin of of, the, of your sound you kind of drive for music came to be or yeah it's 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 not as like cut and dry as like oh like you know like er, all those five generations were musicians or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. my, my dad is a guitar player. And when I was a kid, I would go to his, you know, band, band hangouts and listen to them play like Credence and the Beatles and, you know, stuff like that. Mustang Sally and, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all, the good all stuff. that, all that stuff, you know? And so I had a really early exposure to like music is, is an incredibly fun thing to do and just a, uh, probably the funnest thing, at least right. that's, that's, I got that, imp got, that got imprinted on me from a very young age. And, uh, um, I didn't really get into, uh, more traditional music till, uh, later in life, till after I'd actually moved away from, from home and, uh, then started to, the more I dug deeper, the more I started to understand like how, you know, the, the history of that music sort of connected to where I grew up and, and sometimes sort of intersected with my family. Yeah. That's really cool. When did you move to San Diego? I'm uh, coming up on 12 years pretty soon. Wow. No yeah. way. Long time now. <laughs> yeah, you're really just like a very instrumental person in the San Diego music scene and just in in the world of keeping like this sort of music alive too, you know, like Jelly Roll Morton. I mean, that's like the beginnings of American music and that was mm -hmm. such a great such a great tune, man. Like Thanks, man. Yeah, he's He's just the best to me. <laughs> right. You know, I, I'm constantly sort of picking away at some of his stuff on piano, or if I can't figure out how to play it on piano because that stuff is really hard, then I'll try Gnarly. to figure out a way to play it on guitar, and it's, somehow seems more manageable that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's really intricate songs, a yeah. lot of a lot of parts. Yeah, for sure. And that murder ballad too. I was listening to a, a podcast the other day with uh, Coulter Wall. Do you know Coulter Wall? 
He's got some. I know that name. Yeah, he's got some good stuff. But he he was singing a murder ballad, and they were talking about the controversy of uh, murder ballads. You know, because <laughs> yeah. when they were originally written, it was like someone was murdered, and during the time of mourning, people would come around and just like sing stories of of what happened potentially. Yeah, it's just like part of a really old musical tradition, you know, in the you know connects all the way back to like the British Isles and back mm. to when like. Um, yeah, it was just a way for musicians to make a buck. If there was like a big tragedy that like really shocked everyone, you know, you you write a song about it. And, uh, you know, that sort of that tradition continued into America. And, you know, it it that type of songwriting still exists. I mean, especially, you know, in like the Hispanic world, you know, like corridos. It's It's very much that sort of a thing, you know, instead of like gangsters and like shootouts, it's like, you know in the mountain music tradition, it's like a train wrecked, <laughs> the right. coal mine collapsed or, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. whatever it was, if it, if it's like a shocking, sensational or tragic event, then it's kind of ripe material for a song. Totally. Be- before we had Twitch or Google, you know, there was the, uh, <laughs> so it was passed the on. song that yeah, yeah. I passed it on. Yeah. Before like, we had what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what do we have? Um, yeah. It's cool. Like music has always re- like been passed on just, by you know teaching it just person to person which it it connects us which i love and Mm -hmm. like you're saying music is just the most fun thing for most people i feel like even if you don't play music like just listening to music or seeing it live is just so Mm -hmm. it makes us feel alive i guess yeah it just uh it connects people to uh the the moment you know of like the it creates this incredibly special uh, feeling of nowness and and hereness that uh, just kind of blows away and disappears as soon as as soon as the the song ends. So you know, right. it, it just uh, it really fills you with a sense of like preciousness of the moment and and of life. Yeah, that's what it's all about is being present, right? Mm-hmm. All the different spiritual teachers and everything they all say the same thing, and mm-hmm. it's cool that music can help us achieve that. Mm-hmm. You know, for sure, it's awesome. You want to maybe uh, play play a little more for us, for yeah, everybody out sure. there. What was I gonna? Okay, I'll do a fiddle tune. How Ooh. many instruments do you play? Um, I play these. So what do I have here? I got a fiddle, a guitar, and a banjo. I play piano as well, and a little bit of harmonica. Nice. Mandolin. <laughs> you go. And you sing like an angel. <laughs> Thank you. you. Do them all justice <laughs> for sure, man. Well, this is a, a Kentucky fiddle tune called um, Give the Fiddler a Dram. <laughs> and a dram is just like old-timey term for like a serving of alcohol. It's a shot glass, basically. Give the fiddler a shot. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Get this man a shot. Thank you. 
Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, man. Get this guy a shot. <laughs> Dang, does that neck feel tiny or the guitar neck feel huge when you switch between them? Or ah, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I don't even think about it. Nice. Yeah. So used to them all. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Or else I'm just worrying about other things. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's what she said. What do you uh, What do you think about playing next? I think I'm gonna do a guitar tune here. This is um, this is just like a. A really obscure tune I found on some recordings of this, uh, some kind of field recordings of a South Carolina family called the Poplin family. They made, I don't know, I want to guess back in the 50s. Cool. And this one's called uh, Sit at Home. I thought I was thinking of it as like a pandemic <laughs> anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect for the times. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, your voice is just beautiful, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, I need yeah. you. I need you everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> your personal, personal, just musician. Just so soothing. <laughs> Serenader. Man. Just the sequence of songs have made me want to dance. Just like snuggle up, <laughs> hike. Like the list goes on. Wow, that's yeah. that's pretty awesome. Well, um, I know you were just playing guitar, but um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the program you have, the banjos in the classroom, with um, 
it's with your yeah i'd be really happy to it's it's, yeah. it's some of the work i'm kind of most uh, proud to be a part of um in san diego i and that project is the culmination of a lot of uh, 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 meeting a lot of different people and just a lot of uh, effort from a lot of people to make this happen. But um, oh. I uh, make my living primarily as a as a teacher of you know these instruments, teaching private lessons on how to play you know any of these instruments. And uh, so that was one part of it, uh, just becoming known in the world of music educators in San Diego. And uh, I'm uh, early on in my. Uh, time performing in san diego i became friends with uh, jamie deering who's now the the ceo of deering banjos i uh, made that connection and they've been a huge supporter of me as like a performer and just as an artist wow. and then the last piece of this was i got connected with a nonprofit called the center for world music which is a really amazing nonprofit that uh is basically dedicated to bringing um education hands-on education uh, about world music uh, traditions to San Diego public schools. So they 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 hire artist teachers to go into classrooms. They they find instruments that they can then use in the classroom, and then students can like have a semester or two where they learn how to play like uh, Indonesian like percussion music, wow. or you know learn like uh, uh, San Harocho music, you know, and like learn how to like strum instruments and like sing songs. And so they oh, awesome. uh, connected with me, and so we've always wanted a teacher to represent American music of some part, because American music is a part of the world. And so um, the, that nonprofit really sort of like built a coalition between uh, Deering Banjos and the San Diego Music Foundation, and kind of cobbled together like 20 or so banjos, and uh, then have started... Uh, finding schools where I'll go then and for a semester or two I'll be teaching uh, right now it's just middle schools but we'll have like several weeks where I just teach them about a uh, claw hammer uh, banjo which is kind of um, a style of banjo that uh, really traces this line uh, throughout history of the instrument all the way back to like uh, the west coast of Africa Wow! so it's this really uh, great a uh, way just to introduce students to the instrument and understand how, you know, this instrument, you know, really connects America to, you know, the world. And then they actually learn how to play. You know, they actually, we, we learn a few tunes and they learn, uh, yeah, just they, they become banjo players. <laughs> That's so cool, man. That's, it, it makes a big difference when you introduce kids to this stuff early on, Yeah, you know. Um, I remember Taylor Guitars donated some guitars to my elementary school when I was a kid, and we got to play those. Yeah, I'm like, wow, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah, and that was the big surprise, because I think a lot of people are familiar, at least in the music community, are familiar with the San Diego Music Foundation's work with Taylor Guitars and their guitars in the classroom pro program. But I, I can't remember the story now, but they had like 10 or 15 banjos just like in a locker tucked away somewhere, <laughs> you know, and and so the... Center for World Music was like, well, can we use those? And they said, yeah, sure. What are we going to do? <laughs> That's so cool, man. Applied storage. Applied storage, yeah. <laughs> it's one of our, our main mottos here is applied storage. Like, yeah. stuff's just sitting there, use it, you know? Someone someone could be using that. Yeah. Learning about... It's so cool that you guys teach them and then also get to play some songs. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. And music is such a tool for other things, too. It's like, if they don't become famous musicians, maybe they're just, like, getting closer to peace. Or, you know, it kind of puts them on a different trajectory where they're now they're not going to do something terrible. They'll do something kind or mm -hmm. oh, totally so it has a huge impact. And you're, oh, yeah, go for it. Oh, I was just going to bring up um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, another another project of yours is the Southern Pacific Sessions you had going yeah, on. Uh -huh. You want to tell us everyone out there and us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. That's a concert series that uh, I started several years ago because um uh, uh, whenever I would look at like the, the national community of like traditional music musicians that play music like I do and tour, they would always do these West coast tours and they would always skip San Diego. <laughs> always. Like I would, I would see like, Oh sweet. This band I really love is going to come to the West coast. Oh cool. They're playing Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, LA. And then like, you know, <laughs> oh, the, the tour date stop. And no so I bueno. said, Okay, I, I got I got to do this. So I started a concert series and started reaching out to other promoters, like and said, "Look, like if when these acts are coming on the West Coast, if 
tell them if they want another date, like to contact me. No and so we started putting together these shows and we've just had so many amazing musicians. We've had, you know, banjo and fiddle players that have won like national championships. We've yeah. had like, uh, we had Lone Pignon come. They were one of the, one of the, maybe the second to last concert that we had before we had to shut down. But, you know, they're from New Mexico and they're, they've been like doing all this amazing research on like old New Mexican, like Hispanic music. Wow. You know, and so they came here and, you know, just incredible, incredible music that, you know, played by some of the best people that, that play it. Yeah. So we've been doing that for a few years. Um, we were doing it in uh, Bird Rock for several years at a venue called Calabash uh, School oh, yeah. of Music and the Arts, yeah. and then moved it down to Verbatim Books in North Park, trying to get a more central location. Nice. And uh, we also then expanded into uh, doing square dances, too, trying to just to get find other ways to get people involved in traditional music and just recognize how awesome it is and how fun it is so we put on a square right. dance I, I i had my string band played we flew in a collar from uh from oakland and that was like like two or three weeks before the shutdown happened dang um, right when all this momentum's picking up yeah yeah dang well we're looking forward to more of that on Me the horizon too. hopefully i could use a square dance right, <laughs> right. <laughs> use a dosey do yeah <laughs> if you know what i mean cool well maybe oh, you I could do. give us all a little more examples of your fine playing sure sure what was i thinking about doing next southern pacific sessions again if you guys didn't catch that that's what that's called and make sure you uh check that out once everything's back it seems like things are starting to get back so hopefully hopefully the next one will be soon so I'll do something here. This is that claw hammer style of banjo that um, that I sort of work on with the with those middle schoolers, the cool. banjo in school programs. I'll do a couple of tunes here mashed together. This is uh, Shorten and Bread and uh, the Wild Horse. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. So great, man. It's the time for like one more tune. Is that yeah, the deal? Yeah, yeah. One yeah. more tune. Is right. that cool with you? I always like to do this as like a last tune, but um, this is a fiddle tune called The Fun's All Over. Ooh. <laughs> fun is <laughs> oh. fun is never over. <laughs> only only paused. <laughs> Tighten this up here. Jumped into bed and the bed turned over. The fiddler's drunk and I'm hung over and I'm going back to my family. Fun's all over, drank all the wine, turned the glass over. Sun's coming up and the fun's all over, and I'm going back to my family. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome, man. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No one ever does. <laughs> right? What a fun tune. That's awesome. All your tunes are fun, even the murder ballad. <laughs> So you recently uh, cut an album over at Old Time Tiki Parlor uh, Records, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. I'm in the middle of working that out right now. I'm sort of sorting out the the mastering and uh, the artwork, figuring out the liner notes. So you know, nice. kind of at the at the tail end of the production process. So I'm almost to the point where I can just let things go and wait for the stack of CDs to come back. Wow, <laughs> yeah. how Tell exciting, us man! About the uh, the songs on that album. Yeah, there's there's a lot. It's I think it's uh, 16 tracks, and um, Old Time Tiki Parlor is a record based out of LA that's just been putting out a lot of really really great uh, records from old time musicians, uh, traditional musicians that I really really love, and um, and I'm, uh, I'm friends with the the guy that runs it, a guy named David Bragger, and just sort of reached out to him at first, just looking for advice about. Uh, about um how to just get more people to notice this record and he just said well hey why don't you just put it out on on here and i said sure great let's do that <laughs> so it's uh, it's 16 tracks it kind of um I, I wanted to try to make an album that just kind of represented i guess like the full the broadest breadth of what i do musically because um there are just so many different styles that i guess i try to touch on that usually don't wind up like on the same cd Right, but right. I just kind of wanted to make a CD that just had it all on there because hey, that's that's what I do and that's what I like. So there's there's 
kind of like what you've heard today. It's just like one trackle might be like a really delicate kind of a beautiful banjo piece. And then the next one's like a, like a raunchy blues guitar thing. And then the next thing is like a piano piece. And, um, you know, some of the tracks on there are just really kind of spontaneous live off the cuff kind of things with a lot of live energy. And then other things are just like super meticulously arranged and like hyper produced, I guess, (laughs) just because like I, you know, there's, there's a part of me, a musician that likes uh, all of those different things. So it's, it's all over the place, but that's, that's kind of what I am musically anyway. So that's awesome. Man. Yeah. And you, um, you also rec- have recorded for some other artists on that label, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there, I think I have, there are three CDs in various stages of development Oh, nice. <laughs> that, that are all, that are all going to be released on there. So that's awesome. Man. I think, uh, it, well, yeah, there's there's my album that we're nearing the end of the, the production process. Then there's a string band based out of San Francisco called Skillet Licorice <laughs> that um, they have a similar, they're also all over the place, but they cover all these other things that I don't cover. So they do a lot of ragtime oh, fiddle nice. stuff, uh, for example. And, uh, you know, over the course of the pandemic, we've just been sending audio back and forth. And you know they'll send me a track. Uh, the, at the core of it's a guitar player and a and a fiddler, uh, and uh, they'll just send me stuff and be like, "Okay, can you put mandolin on here <laughs> and uh, a piano? And can you put like a little banjo on this track?" And you're the guy. We just had like a lot of back and forth like that. So we're doing that, and then um, Mara Kay and Tim, you had them on the show uh, a few episodes ago. We've been working on a record. Um, we've been we've kind of gotten together to do these like marathon recording sessions a, a few times over the last few years and we'll kind of just go in and just like record all day and walk away with like a huge uh <laughs> sack of songs and then we'll kind of whittle that down and be like well these four are good and we've kind of been we're, we all think we're we did one of these just like a month ago or a month or two ago and i think we're almost at the stage now where we have enough tunes to make an album with them so that's more uh old school blues uh jug band yeah uh stuff yeah that's awesome man yeah Yeah. is the g burns jug uh jug band gonna be doing it anything anytime soon or no not really that band is that uh, the time has passed for that band oh, okay yeah that's nice so the 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 jug player for that band jonathan piper and uh tim who was the guitar player in that band you know we all work with mara at different uh points now but um but no the g burns is is over oh bummer bummer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though man it's cool that you have all your hands in all these different projects and yeah mara's just her voice is incredible man yeah she's a really special talent that's a really rare right talent yeah yeah you feel like you're going back in time you're like when when she was here it was like the the energy was pretty crazy for sure yeah yeah so we've we've done a lot of shows we uh we met her uh me tim and jonathan all met her a few years ago in port townsend washington where there's a really great acoustic blues uh workshop and festival that we got to go play at and we met her there and, um, you know, ev- and then she, you know, she was based in Brooklyn at the time. And so for a short, for a while, there was kind of this really nice kind of like exchange where like, <laughs> she'd come over here and do a bunch of shows. We'd go over there and do a bunch of shows. That's awesome. And then she moved over here. Uh, she's based out of LA full time now. So very, uh, lucky for us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's awesome. Good thing Tim fell in love, huh? <laughs> yeah. <good thing>. Yep. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. You guys have a lot of good things coming up. We're, we're really excited. And, um, uh, what's uh what's next live is, is anything being booked uh, next next yeah uh friday i'm gonna be at the black hat bar i have nice. done like a monthly show there for i'm gonna guess like seven years whoa six or seven years i love that spot uh, i've seen you play there i was just hanging out in the loft the top yeah, area yeah uh-huh good times the black hat bar and the the owner matt uh, parker has been like one of my earliest and like steadiest like uh uh supporters wow. so um i really love playing at that bar i'll be there friday they have a uh really janky 
awesomely janky piano that, <laughs> that someone rolled in from the alleyways, literally. Um, and so I usually play a lot of blues uh, and early jazz piano on there and might bring like one or two other instruments to mix it up. Nice. But I'm there Friday. I'm doing a show at Sycamore Den later this month, but I can't remember the date. So it's all right. Look it check, up. Check, the, check out the Sycamore yeah. Den. <laughs> check out the website. Do you have a website? You can check I do, out. but I haven't updated my gig calendar in a long time. I'm out of practice. <laughs> it's all right. No one's really yeah. been used to having gigs. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. you? Were you playing Black Cat all the way through the pandemic too? or? Not really. Uh, there were a couple times... See, this was another huge bummer. Like, I moved um, really close to the Black Hat Bar, like walking <laughs> distance, like shortly before the, the 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 shutdown happened. So I was all stoked. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get to walk to my favorite gig every month." And then, you know, that got shut down. But <laughs> there have been a couple times when you know I actually did a live stream from inside Black Hat Bar during the shutdown, which was super cool. That's really awesome. You know, just got to hang out there with like nobody and <laughs> and like play play for tunes trying to raise some money for them because that was back in like uh, the early enough in the pandemic where, where we were everybody would just didn't really know what was going to happen or where right. the, when the bottom was going to fall out so <laughs> but uh yeah I, I did a few live streams uh, for them and then on my own and then just got really sick of live streams like I like a lot of know. people <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i know that's why we're like we're stoked to have this production with Andrew and Ryan helping us out because it, yeah. it makes it easier to stay in the live yeah, stream. This is so much better than like staring into my phone and no one. <laughs> Hell yeah. And just like well, having silence whenever I finish it. Too. <laughs> right. Well, we're, we're so thankful that you came on tonight, man. And yeah, my pleasure. It's been a, yeah, man, it's been just such a good time sharing this just historical, traditional American music. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to the album and, Looking forward to having you on again sometime and make sure yeah. you go to the Black Cat Bar on Friday if you're watching yeah. out there. And what is your website, just in case anybody wants to grab a lesson? Best place to, well, this, I have a confusing setup, but the best place to do for lessons is uh, clintondavismusic.com. And then you can set up a lesson what I do online right now. And um, so you can just set up, schedule something uh, online yourself and, and we can just go from there. There we go. We'll make sure you get a lesson. There's some international students we've heard, which is pretty cool. <laughs> He's global. He's and, the global uh, man. Yeah. Until next week, this has been Barn Time. Next week, tune in for Lee Coulter. We're excited for that one. And um, yeah, thanks to you guys for tuning in and to Clinton Davis for being here tonight. And uh, have a good night, you guys. Enjoy. All right. Barn Time, episode 17. Cheers.